Hey there everyone, today we're going to show you some 17th century pictures from Vietnam. And if you're worried these are going to be tiny little etchings and very intricate, you're in for a pleasant surprise because we're going jumbo sized. Check this out. Keith, I might even need your help here. I think you will. This is a big box. There's a book in here, isn't there? Well, they're individual drawings, so uh, we'll take them out one at a time and have a, a really good pour over them. All right, we're going to go upstairs and show you these amazing pictures. Let's do it. We've got these huge pictures and a tiny, tiny lift. Oh. In you get. We've got room for you, Keith. Oh. There's like this little tiny lift at the Royal Society they use for the library staff to take books. That's really, really tiny. I'm stuck in here with James. If it breaks down, I don't want to think about it. But at least we'll have some good pictures to look at. Okay, Keith, before we see the first of these pictures, what basically are we about to be looking at here? We're going to look at some views of Vietnam, but the very, very early views are from the 17th century, and but they're by a man called Samuel Barron, who was known to the Royal Society at this period. I've taken my gloves off because the paper's very delicate and I want to be able to handle it properly. Well, this has been conserved, as you can see, but they're absolutely monumentally sized drawings. They're fabulous things. Do you know what? It looks like a giant Where's Wally. Yeah, exactly right. And he's, All the little people yeah. and the little things everywhere. Where is he? So he's in Hanoi here, which was the capital of what was then called Tonkin, which is North Vietnam. So he's showing you the scene by the river in about 1684-5, that kind of period. Keith, what's this guy doing there? He's a trader, and you can see that from this map, because what he marks here is the English factory where trading is going on and the rivals, the great rivals, the Dutch factory over there. And these people are trying to make their living from trading, particularly the silk trade with Japan. But Samuel Barron is native to Hanoi. He was born there. His father was Dutch. His mother was Vietnamese. So Samuel Barron is Anglo-Vietnamese. He's knocking around London. The Royal Society recognises he's an interesting man. So they give him the job of, of telling them about Vietnam. And this is one of the ways he does it. What's going on here? It's like an island of people lying down or something. That's right. Well, we have a kind of building here. And this is clearly a retinue. So this is probably a royal retinue. And we've got elephants and various other things. And in some of the detailed drawings that Baron makes, we find out a little bit about the customs and practices, not only of the common people here, but also of royals. Let's have a look at the uh, King of Tonkin. Okay, we, we've kind of zoomed in a little bit here. Mm. So here we have the immediate royal retinue with the various retainers that are all numbered and named in the key here. It begins with the king on his throne and then his lifeguard. And then there are various standard bearers and heralds here. There's one for the king. Here we've got two for these lifeguards here and here, all these guards, so. Now there had been a book about Vietnam published uh, by a man called Tavernier. He'd never been there, but the Royal Society knew about this book, had been translated into English, and they gave Baron the job of, of, of checking it, which is what he's doing here. This one's a bit crazy. What's going on here, Keith? Well, here's a street scene with street entertainers and things that you would find going on there. So what, he's kicking a football up in the air? That's right, yes, and it says in the key he's playing at football. So here we have football happening in Vietnam in the 1680s. I can't say I condone of cockfighting. I don't mind a bit of football. Yeah. What on earth is going on here, though? No, I can't quite work out whether this is intended to be a puppet or someone small climbing up a pole for entertainment. But it is clearly all happening in the streets here. You can see a balancing act going on here. The gentleman there at number four, you can see, is pulling a snake out of his mouth. So he's a street magician and an entertainer. This is crazy town. Mm. We've got stilts, we've got snakes, we've got football, we've got sword craziness. There's quite a few there, but this is the last one we'll have a look at for now. What do we got here? Well, this is a, a vessel of the period. It's a rowing vessel, but it's also armed. You can see a, a cannon poking out of the front here. English and Dutch traders in the Far East of this period had a precarious livelihood. But it just shows you that these people got around a bit. You know, they, he's in London in the 1670s, and he's out in the Far East in, in the 1680s. And he writes this account in Fort St. George in, in Madras. So he's in India as well. So he's a much-traveled individual. 
one of my favorite things about this is it's got this lovely grand title and then it's just been crossed out and corrected with a little bit of rubbish handwriting underneath. There's a reason for that because although he submitted this to the Royal Society and to Hooke in the 1680s, it wasn't published. It was only published 30 or 40 years later in the 1720s and by that time they're, they're trying to, to rationalise the English so that when this gets engraved into a plate it's not in that slightly arcane language. So that's the reason for the correction. I think they're rather fabulous things and it shows the interest of the fellows at this period in not just science but other kinds of philosophical activity, manners and so on, and customs in different regions. So very representative of what the fellows and the society was interested in at this period. Oh look, I found Wally. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming these are more kind of close-up or more detailed mm. pictures of sunspots. I think that one looks like the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> that one looks a bit like a ghost. Oh, I thought an eagle. An eagle? No, yeah, from behind. You know how a lot of people look at clouds and say, oh, I see a dog and I see a car. Do solar scientists look at sunspots and say that one's a spider and that one's a truck? Or are you, do you, are you completely dispassionate <laughs> about them? There are certainly times where we see arrangements of spots on the sun that might look like a smiley face. You can't help but comment on it. 